Welcome to lecture 7 of design of FIR filters. So in the design of FIR filters let us take a brief introduction about uh, what is a filter and uh, what are the related uh, parameters of the filter designs. So it, the term filter is commonly used to describe a device that uh, uh, discriminates the signal which passes through it according to some attributes of the objects. Uh, applied at its input. So, this is what is the uh, a general description about the filter. Okay. So, the filter uh, is nothing but a device okay. so which is used to discriminate or filter the signal what passes through it and it does that filtering operation according to some features or characteristics or attributes of the object or the signal that is applied to at its input. So therefore, an LTI system, it also performs a type of filtering or the discrimination uh, among various uh, uh, frequency components of the signal which are applied to its input. And therefore, the nature of this filtering action is determined by the frequency response characteristics H of omega. So where here the omega represents the frequency. Uh, now this uh, particular frequency response characteristics H of omega, it in turn depends on the choice of uh, the system parameters that is mainly the choice of the coefficients of difference equation uh, ak and bk um, which are going to characterize the particular system ok. So therefore here uh, what the type of filtering that is done ok and that is determined by mainly the coefficients ak and bk of the difference equation ok and therefore the proper selection of the coefficients is needed so that we can design frequency selective filters ok. So, which are going to uh, filter the signals which pass through them with various uh, frequency bands. Okay. So, therefore, in general in general an LTI system modifies input signal spectrum x of omega according to uh, its frequency response h of omega and gives an output signal y of omega and that is uh, represented by an equation y of omega equal to h of omega into x of omega ok. So, therefore, the general operation of this uh, filter is to modify the spectrum of the input x of omega uh, according to the frequency response h of omega of the filter. So, that the product h of omega and x of omega is going to give an output signal whose spectrum is y of omega. Okay. So, therefore, the entire filtering action can be now represented as so y of omega equal to h of omega into x of omega. Okay. So, this is the frequency response characteristics of the particular filter in terms of product of the input spectrum x of omega and the filter characteristics in the frequency domain h of omega. Okay. So, here h of omega it acts as a weighing function or a spectral shaping parameter or a spectral shaping function uh, to different uh, frequency components which are present in the input signal. So, therefore, in this particular context uh, any LTA system so can be thought of as a frequency shaping filter because the LTA system also performs the same option, operation. So, therefore, in that sense an LTA system can also be considered uh, as a frequency shaping filter only. So, though uh, it may not uh, block okay, some of the frequency components, but its basic action is same as the filtering action only. So, therefore, now uh, the LTA system and filters they are synonymously used. The words LTA system and filters are synonymously or interchangeably they are used. Okay. So, therefore, uh, we can now define uh, the term filter. Okay. So, filter is nothing but a LTI system which is used to perform spectral shaping or the frequency selective filtering operation. Okay. So, therefore, with that definition, so let us see uh, what are the characteristics of uh, ideal filter. Okay. So, we will take up the ideal filter characteristics. Okay. So, now uh, the ideal filter characteristics, so their main uh, uh, property is their main properties they have uh, the constant gain okay. their feature is the ideal filters okay. 
so they have the constant gain constant gain so by how do we represent the constant gain that is v not is equal to vi so this is a ideal characteristics otherwise uh, we will represent v not is approximately same as vi okay so when we write v not is exactly equal to vi so obviously this is the nature of the ideal filter okay so where uh, this v not equal to vi is available so this is the pass band characteristics so this v not equal to vi v not equal to vi it is the pass band characteristics it is a pass band characteristics and v not is equal to 0 so this is the ideal characteristics that we expect in the stop band okay so now this is a very basic requirement of any filter okay so therefore we have uh, categorized the band of operation into two zones two regions one is the pass band other one is the stop band so as the name itself indicates pass band means it is a region okay so uh, in which okay so we expect the signal to be available okay that is in this particular frequency band okay all the signals which possess those frequencies have to be passed okay so and giving the gain equal to uh, 1 that is v not equal to vi but whereas the stop band okay so this defines the region where filter has to completely attenuate the signals so thereby making v not equal to 0 okay. so this is one requirement so this is one requirement v not equal to vi in pass band and v not equal to 0 in this stop band now another important characteristics of ideal filter uh, is its phase response second important requirement is the phase response so therefore uh, to understand this particular feature to understand this phase response feature feature so let us assume that a signal sequence signal sequence x of n with a frequency confined within a range w1 to w2 is passing through a filter whose frequency response is defined as follows so h of omega is equal to c into e to the power of minus j omega n naught uh, for all the frequencies which are between omega 1 and omega 2 and this is 0 this is 0 uh, otherwise otherwise so why this definition is required now in order to understand and a uh, second uh, ideal uh, feature of the uh, filters that is phase response feature so for that what we have considered consider a sequence x of n whose frequency is confined confined means limited in the range omega 1 to omega 2 okay now assume that this x of n is passing through a filter okay so whose frequency response h of omega is defined like this okay so the magnitude characteristics h of omega is equal to c into e to the power of minus j omega n naught in the range omega 1 to omega 2 and it is zero otherwise so this is the um, filter characteristics of the filter frequency response characteristics of the filter okay so therefore now uh, as a block diagram representation i can just uh, represent like this x of n is a sequence our input sequence it is passing through the filter okay so this is a system uh, whose impulse uh, sorry frequency response is h of omega and we expect that it is going to give y of n as a output filter output okay and now this is this h of omega which is defined in the above equation above equation okay so now consider this as the equation one which gives the characteristics of the filter okay now what is this c now c is a constant even n naught is also a constant okay so c and n naught so both assume that they are the constants okay so now um, uh, the block diagram is also available so therefore now we can write what should be this y of n ok so therefore uh, since uh, filter frequency response it is in the frequency domain so now I can write uh, frequency domain for uh, x of n that is x of omega and of course for this we are going to obtain the frequency domain response that is y of omega so therefore now I will write uh, what is the output of the filter
output of the filter y of omega it is defined like this so y of omega is equal to it is modification of x of omega by h of omega h of omega but what is this y of omega it is x of omega into so now i have a specific definition for h what is that it is equal to c into uh, just a minute mm. okay so this is c into uh, e to the power of minus uh, j omega n not minus j omega n not where in the range omega 1 to omega 2 and uh, it is of course 0 beyond that 0 that we have only defined so therefore now further i will write like this so y of omega is equal to c into c into x of omega into e to the power of minus j omega into n uh, let us consider this as a equation 2 so therefore now we have uh, uh, reached at uh, the product sequence that is uh, c into x of omega into e to the power of minus j omega n now. now at this stage using the Fourier uh, transform properties okay so using the Fourier tra transform properties which are nothing but scaling and uh, time uh, shifting okay so which are defined like this x of n if it is a Fourier transform pair with x of omega then x of n minus k is a Fourier transform uh, pair with e to the power of minus j omega k into uh, x of omega. So, this is what is the property that we are making use in this derivation. Okay? So, whenever x of n is our signal, x of omega is its Fourier transform. When I have a signal x of n minus k, then the Fourier transform for that is e power minus j omega k into x of omega. So now you applying this property in equation 2, I can write what is y of n that is time domain signal. So therefore, now y of n is nothing but c into x of n minus n naught. Okay? So this is one important uh, uh, result which shows how the filter output y of n. Okay? Uh, can be given and call it as a equation 3 ok so now this particular action uh, that we have taken only because of the property here ok so whenever you have x of omega multiplied with e to the power of minus j omega k then in the time domain in the time domain actually the sequence is in the form of x of n minus k so now already I have this form here x of omega e power minus j omega n naught. So therefore, if I take the inverse Fourier transform, I am going to get a what time domain sequence y of n. How the time domain sequence y of n looks? It is nothing but x of n minus k. So in this case, it is nothing but x of n minus n naught because in place of k, we have taken n naught in our derivation. So therefore, now what is this y of n? Y of n is nothing but the output coming from the filter. So now this is an important uh, uh, equation which shows the behavior of the filter for the input uh, applied. So what we have applied actually it is x of n but the result is result uh, coming out of the filter is c into x of n minus n naught. So therefore now we can write that the filter output here the filter output here is nothing but simply a delayed a delayed and amplitude scaled delayed and amplitude scaled version scaled version of input so therefore filter output is nothing but okay filter output is nothing but a delayed and amplitude scaled version of input signal x of n okay so where is that delay delay is nothing but this part x of n minus n naught is the delay it is delayed by an amount n naught 
where is the amplitude scaling it is nothing but c okay c gives the amplitude scaling n minus n naught represents the delay okay so it is this, again the version of input only so therefore the filter output is not any uh, new signal or any arbitrary signal which is not at all existing okay it is the same input signal only but in a different form how what is a different form it is a simply a delayed and amplitude scaled in version so therefore i can now write the block diagram like this uh, h of omega okay so then it is going to give me output y of n which is nothing but x of n minus n not which is multiplied by again some c okay so therefore for the signal which is coming out the amplitude is also scaled and the signal is also some delayed okay so these are the additional features introduced by the filter function h of omega to our incoming signal x of n okay so now equation 3 is an important result to understand the basic filtering operation and and also and also it should be noted that a pure delay is tolerable a pure delay is tolerable and it will not be considered as a distortion of the signal that is because the delay uh, will be applicable to all the frequency components so when all the frequency components in the signal are delayed by the same amount then obviously the it is not considered as a distortion that's the first condition and also and also uh, same with the amplitude scale because all the uh, signal components will be scaled by the same amount c okay so therefore the pure delay is also not a distortion okay and also the same thing with the amplitude scaling also so therefore the ideal filters uh, have a linear phase characteristics now this is known as this is known as linear phase characteristics within their pass band okay so having the same delay component for all the frequency elements and also having the same c for all the components okay so this is an important feature okay and we say that the ideal filter has the uh, linear phase characteristics within their pass band okay so therefore now uh, uh, from equation 2 we can write that the characteristics h of omega h of omega it is having magnitude as well as the phase part h of omega okay so therefore this is nothing but now in our case it is c into e to the power of minus j omega n not okay so therefore in this in this the magnitude of h of omega is equal to c okay so and and angle of h of omega angle of h of omega is equal to minus omega into n not okay so therefore this particular part it is related with the amplitude and this is nothing but the phase this is nothing but the phase okay so therefore within the pass band only we are discussing all these things because outside the pass band it is a stop band where we have defined that the signal has to be zero there okay so therefore within pass band hmm, the amplitude scaling is c as well as the filter is going to possess the linear phase minus omega into n so therefore within pass band the linear phase theta of omega is equal to minus omega into n not and this i am going to call it as equation 4 okay so this is where within the within the pass band within the pass band this is the action okay so therefore uh, the derivative of this the derivative of uh, this equation uh, with respect to frequency with respect to frequency has the units in terms of delay okay so therefore the signal delay is nothing but the function of the frequency and now this is given by given by uh, tau g omega of omega is equal to minus d by d omega of theta of omega what is this it is it, this represents the derivative okay so the deri de, uh, derivative of the phase d by d omega of theta omega okay derivative of the phase with respect to what with respect to the frequency omega 
this result okay has unit of delay okay so therefore now this delay tau can be now written as tau equal to minus d by d omega of theta of omega okay so where this tau g of omega this is known as envelope delay this is known as envelope delay or envelope delay or group delay envelope delay or group delay of the filter envelope delay or group delay of the filter okay so therefore this tau group delay tau is nothing but the time delay okay so here i can write now this tau g is nothing but the time delay time delay that signal component of frequency omega undergoes okay so as it passes from input of the filter to the output of the filter okay so therefore uh, what is this tau so tau is nothing but the delay the delay experienced by delay experienced by the signal component signal component whose freq of frequency the signal component has a frequency omega now okay omega so when when it passes when it passes from okay so input to output of the system input to output of the system okay so this is how uh, the delay concept comes into picture and also whatever this uh, theta of omega is there okay so this theta of omega is linear is linear okay and and this group delay is nothing but equal to n not group delay is nothing but equal to n not okay so this is because because whenever you take d uh, whenever you take the derivative of equation 4 so what is what is the equation for theta of omega is equal to minus omega into n not okay so when we take its derivative uh, that is when we do it d by d omega then the result will be equal to n not which is nothing but the constant n not which is nothing but the constant so thus it means that all the frequency components uh, of the input signal of the input signal so they will undergo the same delay okay so thus uh, the ideal filters have a constant magnitude characteristics and a linear phase characteristics within their pass band so therefore now we can uh, summarize that an any ideal filter ideal filter so first of all it has a has constant has constant magnitude characteristics constant magnitude characteristics and also linear phase characteristics linear phase characteristics where it is present within pass band only within pass band okay so this is what is the important feature of the ideal filter so why it is constant magnitude this is because c into x of n minus n not so this is the constant magnitude characteristics and linear phase so why the linear phase so this is because of n minus n not okay so this delay is common to all the components uh, of the input okay so but these are the only idealizations of the particular filter but practically they are not realizable okay so therefore it provides this kind of analysis it provides only a mathematical idealization for the practical filters okay so therefore in the next session we will see what are the characteristics of practical uh, frequency selective filters thank you